Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk. 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 Alright. Number 114. 114 in a new font. How do you like that? Ooh, that font is cool. How have we been doing this for 114 episodes of this? It's a huge catalog of stuff. <laughs> and if you've missed some of it, it's still there. Anyway, we've got lots of stuff. You've got some stuff to talk about tonight? Yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some software updates that have caused people some trouble. Oh, some yeah. new software that's causing some fixes. Okay. And uh, actually making things better. And uh, yeah, mostly software tonight. All right. And I'm going to talk about riding the gain mm -hmm. and proper microphone technique so you don't have to necessarily ride the gain or how you do that. Mm. So stay tuned. It's VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk right now. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by... VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B S Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Got to get Jeff in there. Tech Talk. There he is. Tech Talk. The man, the myth, the legend. Tech Talk. Tech. The man, the myth, the legend. Tech Talk. Tech. It's eleven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to get the residuals on this. Can't <laughs> I don't know if we right. can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's getting multi-language dubbing rates now. Oh That's yeah, true. That's right. Boom. Yes. Well, we're here to talk about home voiceover studios. You know, it, it, it's definitely a niche, but there's so much to it that we just keep coming up with things to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, but the most important thing you need to remember is that. You have to have professionals get your studio set up. You can look, you can go on Facebook, you can go on LinkedIn, you can go to all these places and ask questions and get 10,000 different answers, all of which George and I will tell you are probably wrong, unless they're people who, <laughs> who listen to us. Uh, because we've worked, you know, everybody's an expert in one studio, their own, right. except us too. And there's some really great names out there who are really great experts in their own studios that are very smart and they know what they're talking about. But right. they're still really know their own studio really, really well. They're not in your closet. Yeah. You know, they don't they don't understand. A lot of engineers who say, Oh yeah, you gotta get this and you have to have this. That's what they use. They, yeah. They've spent twenty five years learning how to use all this stuff, and then they expect you to learn it overnight. No. Doesn't work that way. No. There's a simple way to do it. We've got the formula. We know we know what it's supposed to sound like. What it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. Whistle. There's a way it's supposed to sound. And getting there isn't as hard as you think. Just a number of different different formulaic things that we know how to go through to customize it to your space. And what you can't go wrong. Look, you two experts like us, you really can't go wrong. So if you want to work with George, which lots of people do, you go over to his very extensive website, georgethe.tech. Tech. If you want to work with me, that's where you're going to find me. You're also going to find a whole team of folks who A huge are team you've got specialists. now. Specialists. Right. Are we not only specialists, but we can only be one person at one time, right? So I've got backup of a lot of great folks. And I have folks who also do on-demand support, which uh, to me is... <laughs> Really, one of the best services we offer because if, when you have a gig that you might lose because, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that my port's not mapped or, oh my gosh, I didn't know this happened or holy cow, this device rebooted and it won't, you know, whatever it is, 
We do have 911 support now. So, and there's a, a deep bench of folks, including Dan, who might in- answer that call and help get you back online. So that's that's something I'm really proud of among all the things that we do at George the Dot Tech. But if you just want to go right to the source, talk directly to the mustache, you want to go to homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, and and I've got a number of things I can do for you. Number one, if you got a problem with your audio, I got to hear it. I keep getting people saying, I got a buzz. I got a click. I've got yeah. this. Gotta there was the one it. last week. It was somebody's phone. <laughs> like, why does it? <laughs> oh, your we, phone is right we, next we to We were that. saying that we, we wanted to do sort of a stump the chump. Did you, was that something that came up? Well, didn't we say that it was a phone noise? It was a phone noise. And it, so we were and right. And that solved it. Of course it was right. <laughs> What are you going to do? Okay. It was, I'm like, all you run, you run through your scenarios in your mind. Okay. It could be this, could be that. I know what it is. It's the phone. And it <laughs> was the person's phone. Damn because phone. this afternoon I was working with some stuff and had my phone up close to these monitors. And I'm like. Monitors are a and real. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, it's the phone. There's yeah. a lot of RF that comes off of that. And yeah. those, they're very sensitive monitors and they'll hear that. Um. Okay, but you well, figured that out. You got the guy back to work, and that's because you are the home studio master. master. Uh, exactly. Uh, and uh, But I also have my service of the Specimen Collection Cup, which is what I yep. was getting to. And that yep. is a great service. You click on the Specimen Collection Cup at my, my, uh, my website, takes you to a Dropbox, explain to me, and it's really important to tell me what microphone you're using, what software yep. you're using, what computer you're using, how are you set up? Because mm-hmm. they'll, you know, someone will send me, re- and I want it raw, because people will send me processed stuff. How does this sound? Well, it sounds like crap because you don't know how to process this stuff. <laughs> you know, it's like having processing doesn't mean you have to use it. It's yeah. as simple as that. And if you don't know how to use it, don't. As I always say, if you don't know how to use something, don't use it. You know, it's, it's pretty simple. Or if you don't know much. what it did, turn it off. Right. Exactly. Like if, you, if you turn something on or add something and you don't know what it did, Turn it off because probably it did something that somebody else is going to hear. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I hear people running noise gates. I'm not running a noise gate. Yeah, I can see you're running oh, a yeah. noise gate. You can, oh. you can tell, you can see, uh-huh. you can hear it. Uh-huh. Anyway, go over to the homevoiceoverstudio.com and uh, I'll be happy to work with you. Talk to anybody that's worked with me. They'll tell you I'm even friendlier than that because uh, I'll help you. As a voice actor, I can also give you lots of advice on how to succeed in this business by trying a lot. There's a lot to it. Anyway, you've got your tech update this week, and there's been lots of software issues in the past week, so <laughs> give us the lowdown. What do you want, the bad news or the good news first? I'll always go with the bad news okay, first. Okay, bad news first. All right. Well, the, the first bad news that really threw people for a loop in the last couple of weeks was Audacity dropped a new version, um, 3.4. <laughs> like a bomb. <laughs> yeah, like a bomb. Um, you know, 3.3.3. Three maybe was the previous version. Does that sound right to that you? It does sound Something right. Something like that. And it was working fine. It was not, there was really nothing wrong with it. And that's because that was the point three, that was the point X version of point three, right? So it had several repairs. Well, point four dropped and, uh, well, there was some pretty serious issues. And I think the main one was around, was around, uh, recording in 24 bit. If you tried to record in 24 bit, you had, uh, what happened? Well, what happened? Nothing. It, it would no. It would go. Oh, the le- wouldn't the level just peg? Yeah, it would just peg it the whole just way. Like, right, like right. that, just garbage, right? right? So there was a workaround, but it was really it, it. You know, you had to mess around with the system. So they did. Um, it seems like they're more rapidly responding to bugs now and rolling out fixes faster. So they within a week or two they had three point four point one, and then. Uh, that seemed to fix it for some issues and other issues still persisted. So there's a 3.4.2 coming any day now, says Paul Lysimelli. I want to say his name right. Well, if I'm going to say his name, say the right name, George. I'm going to see if I can get his right name while we're here chatting. Yeah. Well, uh, I, Paul Lysimelli. Is it Lysimelli or Lysimelli? L I C A M E L I. Sorry, Paul. Yeah. He's for ruining going. your name. Get my name wrong for crying out loud. <laughs> but anyway, he is, he's a contributor on the Audacity VoiceOver Users Group on Facebook. That's where I was reading. Which is one of, one of the places to get your help with Audacity stuff. 
and he is one of the very, very long time uh, contributors and developers of Audacity. So he knows. So anyway, 3.4.2 is coming uh, sometime soon. But the bottom line is, if you're on 3.3.3 or another earlier version and it's working great, do not upgrade it. Yeah, Don't I, up it. I upgraded today because I'm like, oh, maybe they fixed it because mm -hmm. there's a fix in there. I put it right. in there, hit record, nothing. Oh, it just didn't even roll? <laughs> didn't even roll. There? Okay. Yeah, so, so it's still, they're still working out the kinks on that one. Um, now, uh, on, the, uh, on the Adobe side, mm -hmm. Adobe Audition released 24.0. And the way Adobe's been releasing things lately, at least in Adobe Audition, is they just, they're on this annual release schedule. They do it every year, same time of year, whether there's something new or not. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and I this don't is see any difference. Eh? There's really been no difference at all of any real material change in the last three or four years. So if you're on 21 or 22, you ain't missing nothing. If it's working today, don't upgrade it. But anyway, 24.0 did come out. No new features, but the bug lists, the bug fixes include sometimes silence was added at the beginning and end during an MP3 export. That would stink. Yeah. That's fixed apparently in 24.0 um fixed the destination is full or no longer available error which would also really suck <laughs> you're trying to save I've, mp3 I've, I've had that one it's that's a reboot and redirect mm -hmm. and that, and that apparently is it. that hopefully is fi fixed in 24.0 and improved scrolling with the trackpad in a waveform and multi-track and in the waveform and in the multi-track view so better scrolling we get used to how software scrolls when we scroll back and forth. It's, Twisted Wave is really smooth. When it's not smooth, it's annoying. So apparently that's fixed. So those aren't, those aren't really minor things. Those are some pretty important fixes. Um, but those are in 24. Now, um, Waves plugins, which I have quite a bit of now training with them. I've had uh, Mike Pearson Adams from Waves teaching some webinars for us at George the Tech. And I just got to recently chat with him on the Pro Audio Suite, my geekier podcast. Hyper geeky. <laughs> Hyper geeky <laughs> podcast. And uh, we found out that uh, Clarity, which you've probably heard of by now, it's been out a year and a half, a very powerful uh, noise reduction tool, um, has a cousin now or a brother called D Reverb. So there's another D Reverbing, D Reverberating, D Reverberating tool out there um that is using the the machine learning method of removing reverb which basically means that they have a huge 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 database of of audio that's been analyzed in different situations where they go this is voice and this is not voice but now focusing on the reverb part not the noise part so that is out and i finally had a reason to try it out i was helping um a voice uh not a voice actor per se, but a television personality. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to play his audio and then right. see if anybody recognizes his audio. Because right. you've probably heard it. The guy's done a lot of television. Um, so we'll see if you know the sound. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a, a, an initial dry sample of the audio that was sent to me. This is after treating the room, by the way. So okay. he's moved into a, a new home with a, a, a pretty large office space. It's right. got a high ceiling. Right. It's pretty long. And so we did acoustically treat it. We put a whole bunch. Of, I didn't we. I just had to, came up with a design. Right. And then we had his installer put everything in. Right. And it was like a it's, a, it's a delicate balance between making it still look like someone's nice home office mm -hmm. and making it look like a recording studio. Right. We still wanted it to look like an office. So we didn't go too crazy. There's still a bit of empty space, right? So it's a little bit, well, slightly reverberant. Let's see if you guys can hear this. Maybe that's why CBS Sunday Morning profiled artist Ed Ruscha in 1982 and again in 2011 and a third time today. Okay, so I played that sample back and you can hear a bit of the room around him. And he's also using, at the moment of this recording, a large diaphragm condenser mic, like a VO mic. So it's a mic that hears a lot of things around you and he's in a big space. So I wanted to make a little processing chain for him and I wanted it to have as little color or modification of the voice as possible, 
but dry up that reverb. So I tried first the Isotope RX-10 version. Then I tried the Waves Clarity VX version. The two are subtle enough that I don't think you guys are going to make out the differences. They're subtle, but the, the Clarity uh, D-Reverb was pretty impressive. Enough to impress him, enough to use it now. And uh, that's what this sounded like. And a third time today. Glenn Lowry is the director of New York's Museum of Modern Art, which is presenting the biggest Ruche show ever. It's not dead dry it's not like you're in a little tiny booth sound right but it did soak up a lot more of that room ambience but you can you can adjust it and do it as non-destructively and just yeah okay, that's there's a knob you can turn it you can add more you can take away so in that sample i'm using i think maybe i think like a 70 percent out of a 70 out of 100 a pretty high setting and i was really happy with how it didn't um it didn't degrade the audio quality you know a lot of people doing voiceover for TV and radio that are, they don't always use a high quality side address condenser mic. They often will use a dynamic right. and it won't expose as many flaws in the room. <laughs> He's in a big empty room with not a lot in it. It's a little bit Spartan and using a, I think he's using a warm audio something WA 47. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a high quality yeah. condenser and it hears a lot more. So, um, there you go. There's a comparison. Hopefully you guys could make that out on YouTube. And I was really happy that in the end, we didn't have to just keep throwing more panels up. You know, I could have said, well, let's put 10 more panels up. And yeah, we could keep soaking it down more and more and more and more. But in this case, the room still feels good. It still looks nice. His wife doesn't, you know, throw up in her mouth when she walks in, <laughs> you know, <laughs> important things. And, uh, and now we can get a sound that, that is that he's happy with. And that's really important. Well, let's talk about that for a second, yeah. because I mean, we're always talking about how one of the things we do, one of the most important things we do when, you know, working with somebody and building a studio for them is, you know, to me, everything is physical. Mm -hmm. You know, you try to create as dead a room as possible, you know, and as little sound coming in, but, as we've explained, that's literally impossible in a home. You know, you've got furnace, refrigerator, amazing how many times a refrigerator is in there. Yeah. Um, all sorts of movement that's going on in the house. Some, you know, construction next door. We've yeah. done that one a few times. The floors and the neighbor's stuff and the right. trash. People, play, kids playing basketball next yeah. door. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to have something that's going to take it out out affecting your voice and you're you think that we're getting to that point now where we can do that um transparently far more transparently than we used to right you know by using these tools we're not creating weird artifacts where you sound like a robot right or you sound like you're underwater or whatever it's right? it's missing yeah. little frequencies here and there yeah and, yeah yeah it, so at the moment, Waves kind of has a little bit of a head start, I think, over Isotope in terms of using these machine learning models. I can, you can guarantee that Isotope is working on their take on this kind of machine learning stuff. You can, it's table stakes now, folks. I mean, there are so many plugins and little applications, some free, some not, that will remove reverb and noise. It's, it's becoming way more common, but. Just kind of cool to hear how well that actually worked. And um, I'll be doing an interview with this person later. So at that point, I'll reveal exactly who right. it is. But uh, it was really cool to get to work with someone who does a lot of on-camera appearances, and but still also runs a podcast, both. So cool. it was really neat. Anyway, let's move on to your topic of discussion. Yeah, you know... I get this a lot from people, people who are, as we were saying, are in different various size rooms. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they're doing animation or they're doing gaming, uh, it's amazing how many different genres of material there are available out there. Mm. But if you're, if you're working from home, and a lot of us are, I'd say the majority of us are, uh, you have to learn how not to overmodulate. And what overmodulation is, is when, you know, you peg it in the red, and it stays there. And essentially what you're doing is you are overmodulating and it distorts. Mm -hmm. Now, there is new, there's new technology coming along that can prevent that. 
takes a little while to figure out how to work it with that particular microphones working in 32-bit float. Oh, like float. a 32-bit float thing. Yeah. Right. But not everybody has that. And Most people don't. Yeah, I Very I presented, you know, we we've been recommending this great mic, the uh, the, the new Rode, Rode. Rode NT1 yeah. fifth generation which really just continues to blow our minds about what a great mic this is, especially for the price which is a deal and a half. 240 bucks. Oh yeah. Bucks. And they you know, I forget to mention that they came out with the NT1 I don't know, special edition, yeah. which doesn't have the USB but they've painted them in a bunch of fun colors cuz they had a lot of them sitting around like <laughs> Apparently right, they had just painted. Well, how are we going to move yeah. these? Make a paint. <laughs> so if you want a fun looking NT1, you can get that. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Great but no, great microphone. But yeah. uh how do you not overmodulate? Mm. Uh, and there's two ways. On the character stuff, especially. Right? For, especially on character stuff. No, I know Pat. Dynamics. F- yeah. Pat Freely used to have this great thing. He'd talk about, you know, if you're, you know, if, if you don't want to overmodulate and if you're yelling, you don't yell in somebody's ear unless mm. you're really trying to torture them. Uh, like some people I know. <laughs> but, you know, his thing was, you know, he would, he would talk about how, or say you got a commercial where your dad's talking to the girls upstairs, like, you turn your head and you go, hey, what are you girls doing up there? What does it sound like? It mm-hmm. sounds like you're hitting the mic. It sounds <laughs> like you are talking up the stairs. There's the theater of the mind. Mm-hmm. If you're a ninja in a video game and you're cutting off somebody's head, and <laughs> you don't do it right into the mic. Unless, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, yeah, and you, and you, you turn well. away or you back way off and then and watch the levels. Now, the other way is riding the game, which requires you to have <clears throat> your interface right in front of you. Like, say, if you have a, a Focusrite uh, 2i2 or a Solo or something like that, you got that game dial. And, of course, I'm always telling you, always in the green, always in the yellow, Maybe an occasional flash of red, although, and, and yeah. there it goes and starts to go into the orange. Transient. A quickie. Yeah, right. A quick and a red is okay. That's fine, because you can control that. You know, mm-hmm. if it, it's, it, you're not going to probably hear that. No, and you're not, the it's more, not going to more transient market. or right. spiky, right. unless you're going to As hear. opposed to really loud, which right. starts to distort. Right. Uh, so what you need to do is learn how to adjust your input volume, and that requires writing the game. Now, sometimes if someone's doing a, a video game and they'll have lots of lines that are loud, and then there's lots of lines that are more conversational. You know. Do they break them up that way for you? They don't, unfortunately. Yeah. You think they would. But so it's a good idea to do that yourself. Eh? Do it yourself. Do the soft stuff first. Mm-hmm. Then do the loud stuff. Because mm-hmm. you do the loud stuff first, you might wear your voice out right. before you get to... The loud stuff will change the way your voice sounds on the soft stuff. Because you've just tired your voice out. Right? Exactly. So yeah. use your voice normally yeah. and learn what your conversational setting is. And on a 2i2 or any interface of that matter, you take a Sharpie and you go, this is my conversational level and you mark it. Mm-hmm. And then you know you're coming, it, it, and it happens with audiobooks too, and, and, and gaming and animation, where you're going to be a little bit louder. Test what, you know, learn what distances are right and learn how loud you really are doing specific characters, test it out first and go, this is the setting f- for being a ninja. I am the dude. Yeah. You know, and that's, mark that. And so as you're writing the game, it's like, okay, I'm coming to this, turn it down. And that's how you do that. It yeah. sounds simple. You got to learn to listen and you have to look and you have to understand what the waveform is supposed to look like. You don't want the waveform going above zero. Yeah, I mean, really don't I, want it going above minus three. Yeah, the truth. and you and you definitely don't want to like, you know, we use the word riding the game because back in the classical engineering days, <laughs> the engineer might actually control the level while you're recording, right? And that's doing it dynamically over time. That's much more difficult. But to make a like a preset almost in your brain, or like you said with the pen, right? This is my softer read. This is my louder read. You don't want to have like seven or eight different steps in between you're never going to keep track of it all right you're never going to get it right just have two settings that you know work for those two styles and you'll be in good shape also i've had a few clients Mm -hmm. use the pad switch to their advantage oh that's a good idea as well because if your mic has a easy to reach pad switch not all of them do minus 20 or minus 10 db i can't i mean gosh i don't know if you're doing some really crazy loud stuff you might need 20 
Right. But a lot of mics have like a 10. Right. And that seems to be enough for most people, like uh -huh. in audiobooks. Right. In audiobooks, you don't really yell. Right. Video games, you do. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Video a games is, is realism. Yeah. Audiobooks is more, it's a little more theater. You don't, you don't fully on, full on scream when you scream. You, right. it's, a, it's, a, it's a theater scream or whatever. You don't go all out. So 10 dB seems to work fine. And, and I, the problem with like the audio technique is the mic is, the little switch is like, it's it's like you, you you need like a pen and it's very hard to see but like the mojave i don't know if this one has no, it doesn't any. have anything yeah up. some mics do some of them have that mic switch that switch very obvious where you can see it and you can flick it yeah that one doesn't have it but some mics have those actually none of the none of the mics we are using tonight have a pad switch folks no. isn't that but interesting the cat the caddy 100 s does that's right it does and the at the at uh not the twenty. The AT twenty thirty five does. Twenty thirty five. It's kind of hard to see it. The AKGs all have a very clearly labeled switch. Right, and there's a couple um, others. You know, because I've been dealing with this a lot lately. It's, yeah. It's just, why can't I get a level? Okay. What do you? Oh, it's an NT one, or or what? An NT one A, which does have that, mm -hmm. and it's a matter of NT one thousand maybe. May, it might be the one and the two thousand. There's a bunch of yeah. different mics that have that. Yeah. Many, many times, and I'll go, which mic model is that? And I'll, mm -hmm. like, like, I know. Oh. I literally will say, what mic is it? And I Google it, find a picture of it. Like Where's the, a picture they, of the back of the mic? Okay. There's and the switch. Where do you have that set? Oh, I've yeah. got it set to minus something or other. All right. Put it back to zero. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, Suddenly you have your level back. it is back. misset. It is often misset. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there's, there's another way to do it. That's right. Anyway, uh, if you've got a question for us, throw it in the chat room. I'm sure you have, like... There are a billion questions popping out of your head right now. And Jeff this Holman is your sitting, last chance your last for chance 2023. For, tw for the rest of the year. If yeah. you want to answer, get your question answered, now's the time to do it. Mm -hmm. Jeff Holman will write it down or type it in or send up smoke sniggles or something like that. Sniggles? Sniggles, yes. <laughs> yes. Been, been a little bit of mouth hasn't been working quite as well. That's all right. Uh, you can call me on all my... <laughs> <laughs> on my floor. <laughs> I'm I'm careful with you. You're you're, you're not actually I'm, a voice. I'm actor. delicate. That's right. Uh, <laughs> throw it in the chat room right now. We'll get to that right after these really important messages. So don't go away. Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk number one fourteen. We'll continue right after those. So don't go away. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voiceover Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. Vobs TV. Oh hi. You know, if you live in a house and your voiceover studio is in that house, you don't want to disturb everybody else who's living in there. So what you need are good headphones that are made specifically for voiceover. And that's why we have Harlan Hogan's Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0. What's so great about these? Well, one, they have a very flat response, so you only hear exactly what it is you sound like. Second incredibly comfortable leather leather pads on the outside filled with memory foam a really comfortable headband that really it really works with your head the most important thing you can wear them for long periods of time that's really important where do you get them only at voiceoveressentials.com that's voiceoveressentials.com just go there look at the headphones and get them now tell them we sent you thanks harlan Hey, this is the time of the show where I talk about Source Connect, which is created by Source Elements. And I've talked about them for several years. So at this point, you have heard an unbelievable amount of information. But I will say, if you don't know about Source Connect because you're watching our show for the first time, you should go check it out at source-elements.com. They create Source Connect, which is the pro's way of remote recording an actor from another location, sometimes multiple locations, because a studio sophisticated enough can actually have multiple actors on the same session all coming in on Source Connect. It's amazing. The sound quality is quite startlingly good. Like if you're used to the way it sounds like when you're in a Zoom meeting or Google Meet or any other meetup chat or conferencing thing, you're going to be kind of shocked at the fidelity and the quality that you get over Source Connect. It is quite startling. And that is why the pros use it. So if you want to become more oriented with it and get used to how it functions, 
I would recommend instead of just getting a demo, just go over to source-elements.com and actually sign up for your Source Connect service. You can get it as a subscription and get started. That way you'll actually have their support. You can only get the support for free if it's on a subscription. So we recommend that you do that. And that way you have their excellent support. And it's, it's award-winning support, by the way. So anyway, that's it. That's it. No more Source Elements for this year. Thank you, Source Elements, for- Use it. For, yeah, just <laughs> use it. And we, we really appreciate Source Elements for supporting us all these years. Let's get on to the last spot and then into your questions right after this. Well, hey there, it's David H. Lawrence with VO Heroes. And wouldn't it be cool if there was a very simple tool, drag and drop tool that would guarantee that the audio you need to upload to ACX or any other audiobook platform is perfectly set up in terms of the tech standards, the root mean square normalization, the peak normalization, the noise floor? Guess what? There is. And I want you to have it absolutely free. It's called Audio Cupcake. And you can find it at audiocupcake.com. I helped create this software. It was built to my specs and my standards for when I do audiobooks, and I know it's going to work for you. Now, it's only available for Macintosh uh, because you Windows users, you have the ability to use other tools that work for you. But in this case, you edit your final raw WAV file for a chapter, you drop it onto Audio Cupcake, and out comes the 192K mono MP3 file you can upload immediately. That's audiocupcake.com. Audiocupcake.com. I hope you love it. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. And guess what? We're back to answer your questions. Because For the last time in 2023. That's right. I'm kind of emotional about it. I I'm a know. little proclaimed. I know. We're going <laughs> to say, you know, one of the things we're going to start doing in 2023 is we're going to start talking a little bit more about podcasting. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, and as I always say, just because everybody can do a podcast doesn't mean everybody should. Uh, but if you've got something to say or have, you, have your, you have a great way of telling it, you have a passion, maybe you've got either an idea for a story or you just have an amazing family history, something that just is really unique. Maybe a podcast is for you. That's right. And, it, you know, and the great thing about podcasting, it be any length. It can be. Any any format, yep. you know, interview format, storytelling. It could be live. Drama. It could be edited. That's right. And that's the great thing about editing is you, you can sound like crap and then we rearrange that. things and it sounds suspect. Yeah, we recommend they edit it. Right. <laughs> if, you, if you're new to doing a show, you're going to absolutely be editing it because <laughs> nobody wants to hear you ramble um, uh, um, and all that stuff yeah. all through you know an hour long podcast. But anyway, yeah, it's... Uh, Something we're going to talk about a lot more, um, and we love doing it. We've done quite a few studios. Dan's produced a bunch of shows. Sue, our very own producer, is a podcasting pro herself. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk a lot more about that subject in right. 2024. Yeah. Slightly different bent. If, you know, if you're a good voice actor and you've got a good studio, though, podcasting should be easy. Yeah. Yeah, it can be. And hopefully we'll be here to answer those questions too. Right. So be prepared in 2024 when we start talking a little bit more about podcasting. But mm -hmm. we'll still cover the voiceover stuff. Absolutely. Because it's all about capturing a performance in a microphone, whether it's somebody else's script or your own, you know? Right. Podcast is like the self-scripted of voiceover in a way, if you think about it. That's right. And, and there is no script for this show. <laughs> no, there is not. And you can usually tell. <laughs> All right, let's get to the, some of the questions here. You go for sure. the first one from Fiber Jazz. There he is in YouTube um, asking about the new Rode NT1 signature. That's the mic I actually mentioned a You're minute ago. About it, yeah. Um, is it the same microphone as the Rode NT1 fourth gen, but with color options <laughs> and also a much lower price? Okay, good question. And I believe the word on the street is is that it's the Rode NT1 fifth gen mic without the usb functionality inside the mic okay i don't know if that makes sense because you would think they would still have a lot of nt1 fourth gens and that they would just paint those i wish but, we had a nickel for every one of those we've <laughs> sold I, yeah i know um but i you know so that is what i've heard and the source right now i can't name because i can't remember who said it so take that all with a grain of salt um 
But my understanding is it will sound exactly like a Rode NT1 5th gen, just without those extra functions and in a bunch of fun, pastel, cool colors. Right. And that mic sounds great on its own. It's oh. a damn good mic to start with. And now at $150. Wow. Mind blown. Yeah. Rode, ha Rode has the scale of production to do that kind of thing. It, and it kind of, when, when the Rode NT1 5th gen came out at 250 with USB and all that, mm -hmm. It made me realize these guys have some unbelievable production scale that they operate at. Right. I was pretty blown away at that price point. Because the mic that be for the prior generation, the fourth gen, was a little bit more expensive and didn't have any additional function. It was just a normal condenser. So pretty mind-blowing. Cool. Um, another question. Do demo players color the sound of your recordings? And if so, can you recommend players... That are more neutral. Thanks. Uh, well, that's that's an easy one. No, they don't do anything. They shouldn't. No, no an HTML shouldn't. player is just that. It's playing your audio through there. Yeah, now usually it, an MP3, right? Right. Now, at world-voices.org, we have a demo player. If you join yeah. the organization, you get the demo player that you can put on your website as a digital signature in your email. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you want to hear my demos? Click on this. All your demos it's pop right up. in the email. And yeah. we know it sounds great because... I mean, demos sound great as well as they are recorded. Yeah. And if you're using, there's no change, difference between them. Now, there's other demo players, some that are really expensive that have all these tools and More stuff bells and whistles, yeah. that you don't really need. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, somebody uses them. People who are very good at their marketing and getting all the analytics and stuff. Yeah. That's fine. Ours gives you a little bit of analytics with uh, all the you know, different, you know, how many people are, you know, getting it what cuts are being used where it's coming from hmm. stuff like that well, important stuff yeah. yeah so uh you know join world-voices.org and get the demo player from there we yeah. worked really hard on it it's, it's if you do have a player on some website template you're using and it doesn't sound exactly like the original audio don't use it <laughs> something's wrong yeah. it should only simply queue up and play that file from the server Exactly as it was stored. So there right. should be zero change in quality. And exactly as it was recorded. Yeah. Uh, Sharon McKeague. Sounds like McKeg. Sharon McKeg. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for writing that. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, a beginner question. And that's why we're here. What does loopback capability mean? Ooh. I, I have an SSL2 and use Adobe Audition. Uh -huh. Oh, great starter stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's real. Uh, I don't yet have a source connect. Mm -hmm. If I do a live directed session over Zoom, how do I loop back? Does that right. mean I can play back just what I recorded? Well, I'm glad that's you gave us those exactly, additional details. Right. Because, that's exactly what it means. Yeah, Zoom has its own. Zoom actually has a way to do it. It's right. called um, screen share with audio. And share right? audio, right. So you can, it, it's a weird thing because you have to share your screen. <laughs> but who cares? As long as what you're on screen is literally just the audio. Right. Right. And so when you share a screen with audio, I'm not going to guarantee it works every time, but, but if it, it should, will it should automatically create that loop so that when you play that audio is fed back down the line on zoom. Um, now it, that should be the way it works with the SSL two. Now SSL two also came out with a new firmware which has what they call a loopback. And this is where things get confusing. It's software driven? It's a software loopback. Uh. But loopback isn't a loopback isn't a loopback. So <laughs> um, the what I've what we've surmised so far is that the SSL2's loopback function is not designed for what we want it for. What we want it more of is really more of a playback function. We want to play a take and let the guest or the director, or whoever, the client who's listening, hear it. The loopback function that is used in the SSL2, the Audient Evo 4, and a couple others is actually more of a mus musician's or podcaster's thing. But what it does is it sends the audio that's coming back from Zoom into your computer, but on a different set of channels. So now you can record yourself and you can record the person coming back to you. Mm -hmm. If you're doing music, that could be the audio coming back from a synthesizer plugin or something or soft software, soft instrument, and you want to record that to another track, that's what that loopback is for. So knowing which one does what is can be confusing. I can tell you that the Yamaha AG03 has the right kind of loopback. 
They've got a new one out too. The, the Mark II is out, yeah. which is a great piece of gear. Um, the I think it's the uh, UR series, the Steinberg UR1222, has the correct kind of loopback. Um, the new um, Focusrite 2i2 fourth gen, yeah. I think it has the wrong kind of loopback. Well, it's got the air thing, but is that the same thing? No, it has some a new driver that lets you uh. do a loopback, but I think it's the wrong kind. As you can see, it isn't that straightforward, and it's a good question. So um, I'm glad you asked it. But Use Zoom. It's a lot easier. It is that well, if the, yeah, it's <laughs> for not for the if, most part. If it's a Zoom directed session, that screen share with audio uh, function will make that a lot easier on you. So mm -hmm. it, it's a good question. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to skip Ellen Cochran's question okay. for a little bit. Okay, you got that, it. That's going to require a little bit longer of an answer. Yeah, you're right. But Jeff, you're on, you, you've got to ask your question. Oh, let me get Mike. Let me get that mic. Okay, Mike's hot. Mike's hot. Excellent. Yeah. So in regards to writing the gain on my PreSonus Revelator mm -hmm. IO24, uh -huh. the gain function, you have to like hit a button and then do the dial. And the dial right. is like, you know, numbers. It's right. not really like a right. set position. Yeah. So right. is there a, like a preset that I can like go pow and just like hit a button and it'll go right to that gain? You can. The the revelator has the, those two little numbers on the front. Yeah. And those are for recalling um, presets. Oh, sweet. So um, I believe it's been long enough since I've used mine that I could be giving you the wrong information. But it does have preset functionality that can be recalled from the face of the unit. I okay. just can't remember the actual how to do it right now, but I know it can. So you could do exactly that. You could make one preset for the spoken word your your what, who calls it the hundred percent voice is that cashman must be just your normal speaking <laughs> voice and then you can have one where the gain is much lower for your high output stuff and just recall that by pressing a button but i don't remember right now how to set that up it's been too long but yes you can do that absolutely cool mm -hmm. thank yep. you yeah 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 keep it simple i've seen i've even seen people do like another preset for just muting the mic Mm -hmm. which isn't that simple to set up, but um, that's another one I've seen people Muting them, like, unplug it. <laughs> exactly. It always works. <laughs> 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 Punk. <Okay. laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> Thanks for the question. Do we have any more, or do we We do already... have one more from Ellen Cochran, okay, who, uh, uh... which requires a little bit of thought. Yeah, it does require a little bit of thought. And mm -hmm. I'll let you go first. And her okay. question is, Hi, guys. Uh -huh. What are your New Year's resolutions before Thanksgiving even hits? Oof. Yeah. Let me guess. You've already decorated your tree. <laughs> People are starting to put up their lights around here. Some of the radio stations are playing a rotation once an hour of Christmas music. Used to be right after Thanksgiving they would start. Now it's after Halloween. I, I did get a fresh batch of lights at the Costco the other day. Okay. 40% off. So, um, <laughs> Anyway. Ah, New Year's resolutions. Well, I guess mine are more centered around, I mean, because I'm in, I'm in business mode right now thinking they're more around my business, but um, I've got some things that I want to have happen for my business in 2024. Uh, I want to have um, multilingual content and support. Mm. So for my company, for George the Tech, I would much, I would really like to be able to provide content, training content, which we already have a huge library of content, but I'd like to get that stuff localized. Mm -hmm. We just had Jeff Howell on talking about that. I would love to localize and dub all of our content in as many languages as possible. Obviously, this is no small feat. Obviously, it's not cheap to do it. Can you imagine and someone trying to dub in you know, 300 episodes of this show? It'd take about a century. <laughs> it really would. Um, and obviously, AI may be a part of the process, but will certainly not be the voice of the show, of my content. We will be using humans for sure. Um, so that is a, that's a big one for me. I want to have international languages and I want to have an international website. So someone coming in from Portugal or, uh, Brazil gets a Brazilian version. You know, those websites that have l little flags mm -hmm. and you can click on your flag. Right. And that's translated to properly. That's a dream of mine to have yeah. a website that's in those, in multiple languages. So. It's maybe a dream, less of a resolution, but that's what I could came up, come up with off the top of my head. And from a personal standpoint, 
my resolution is to um, encourage my daughter. If she's watching, she's probably not. But if she is, Elijah, get back into voiceover, will you? <laughs> my, my, I want to get her back into voice acting and coach and getting coached by Martha. And uh, hopefully we get her to VO Atlanta and um, she's back in the swing of things by VO Atlanta. So that'd be another little resolution that's to, for me to encourage my daughter to, to get back started up in voiceover again. Mm. There you go. Those, those are a couple for you. All righty. Well, I, have, I go off in so many different directions and sometimes in the same moment, which makes it hard to get either one of them. <laughs> uh, I mean, we've th this show, which takes a lot of, a lot of time and effort and we take, you know, and, and doing voiceover, like doing voiceover this morning for some Turkish company and, you know, like, okay, this doesn't translate very well. Uh, and I'm president of worldvoices.org, which is almost like a full-time job because there's a lot going on there. Yeah. But as a resolution, I, I really i want to start learning how to live in the moment and experience what's going on i find sometimes i go through life or i'll drive somewhere and i don't even remember driving there mm, yeah you know or or like like i had with last week with jeff howell having a a, a, a mitch mcconnell moment mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. if you live in the moment and carefully and really concentrate on what's happening around you mm. that helps mm -hmm. now my new car doesn't allow me to do that because it does all of it for me yeah. wait does that mean it lets you daydream somewhat which is why i don't remember where i've been you know it, you know it's like it's, it keeps you in your lane it it, it says there's a car but you know in your blind spot you know it used to be yeah. just a you know a little a yellow little light. light now it's like ding 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 oh, crap got to live in the moment and it's mm -hmm. not easy to do i know there's some people that really work on living in the moment and experiencing life you know at my age you gotta go you only have so many more chapters to go mm -hmm. and make the most out of each one of those now my mom who's 93 this week happy wow. birthday mom Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, still sharp as a tack. Wow. Sharper than me, as I say. You know, it's a and, blessing. Yes. Yeah, she says, how is it that, you know, the, she has a mind of a 36-year-old and a body of a 93-year-old? Yeah. How'd that happen? Uh, it happens. You know, uh, <laughs> living in the moment means, you know, being there for the people you love, being there for your clients, and concentrating on really making yourself there and not drifting all over the place which is somebody it's tough for someone like me who's a little bit on the you know adhd side mm -hmm. uh me too, yeah uh, mm -hmm. you know it's like squirrel mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> um yeah so that would be my my new year's resolution it really is to try harder to live in the moment you know and we're gonna we're gonna be living in the moment when we continue doing this show next year like we said we're gonna make some changes mm -hmm. It's not that we've run out of things to say with voiceover because there's always something new. You know, there's a yeah. lot of people in this business. Yeah. Uh, but there are 10 times as many people doing podcasting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or at least trying to do podcasting. Yeah. Uh, and we just have so much to contribute. Right. There's, we, there's, there's so much to say about it. And we've, we've all been involved with it for so long. Right. It just feels like it's the right time to introduce that right. to our Especially content with audio because how many times you listen to a podcast and it sounds like they recorded it in their bathroom, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, or, or an interview that re the guest sounds terrible and well, how do we make them sound better? That kind of thing. Right. You know, There's so I, much to talk about. Right. I mean, I was doing a podcast last year and there were an open window in midtown Manhattan and there's ambulances going by and it's like, can you take that out? Uh, you could take that out by closing the window and perhaps not being in midtown Manhattan when you're doing this or in a very ver reverberant dining room or something yeah. along those lines. We want to teach you guys how to do that properly. And those of you doing voiceover, you'll understand all this stuff, but we want to encourage people to do podcasting because as I like to describe it, it's the great democratization of broadcast. Yeah. It used to be, those programs you would hear at Saturday morning or Sunday morning at 5.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, 
and now it's time for this, you know, you know and they bring some priest on or a rabbi or yeah. somebody who's working in social services yeah. or something like that's all podcasting is intro body outro. Mm -hmm. And we want to teach you guys how to properly format it, but most importantly, making it sound good. Mm -hmm. What we, you guys like refer to as broadcast quality, mm -hmm. except you're not broadcasting. You're on the, the internet. <laughs> it's streaming quality, streaming quality, broadcast okay, quality means that. it doesn't sound bad. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's going to do it for us this week. We've got a little bit more to talk about on the other side of these, this break. So don't go away. We'll be right back at voiceover body shop tech talk right after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. And now, God, I'm just like, I'm in the phase of the moon here. <laughs> <laughs> See, if I turn that's my called, head that's called this Rembrandt way, lighting. yeah, right. maybe that's what it is. I'm the girl with the pearl earring. Um, we're going to talk to you right now quickly about voiceactor.com. What is voiceactor.com? Voiceactor.com is a great website where you can get a website. As a voice actor, you have to have a website. It's, it, I mean, no matter what you're doing, you should probably have a website. Being a voice actor, very, very important. And there are certain elements that you have to have with the website. Now, some people get real creative and they take their time and they're like, okay, I want it to have this color scheme and this border and all. That's great. Except for, I think for the most part, nobody cares. What you need is your name. I mean, and a pleasant looking background and, and, and arrangement. Your demos, which I think are probably more important than anything else. And even more important than that, you know, people might like your demos, but if they don't know how to get a hold of you, what are you going to do? Your name, your demos, and how to contact you with a pleasant surrounding, easy to navigate. That's what they do at voiceactor.com with templated websites. Go in there, see what will look good, look good for you, and pick that one out. You can adjust the colors, put the pictures where you want. It's totally customizable, and you can do it really quick. The menus are super duper easy in you know how you change the colors and how you change the fonts and all that stuff. And they keep adding more and more templates, uh, which Joe Davis over at Voice Actor website is very proud of that they're continually updating it. You can get yourself online in a dang hurry, like within an hour, you know, less than an hour, you've got a website. And then for $20 a month, you get some other extras with that. You're able to get your own URL that you can put on whatever server you want voiceactor.com to get your voice actor website up and running right now we are the world voices organization also, also known, known as, as wovo Wo -Vo. we're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent voiceover is a complex entrepreneurial business wovo is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public to those already established in their voiceover practice and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career membership benefits include a supportive and creative community a profile and demos on voiceover.biz our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent 
talent. Our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with a chance chance to to learn learn and and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We We speak speak for those who speak speak for a living. You're still watching VLBS? (laughs) And I'm going to assume that we're back. (laughs) We should be. One last time for 2023. (laughs) Um, You know, well, we, we forgot Jeff. Jeff has a New Year's resolution, and make it quick. It's a good one, though. But yeah. We should throw it to Jeff. Jeff, tell us your New Year's resolution. My New Year's resolution is to get on a cop show. I've <laughs> always wanted to be on a cop show like FBI or SWAT, and now that I've lost 130 pounds, now I'm all ready to. All right. What's his IMDb? <laughs> throw Say, it up there, give, Sue. Give, give us your IMDb again. It's... Yeah. It's uh, me slash Jeff Holman. There you go. With one L, one N. All right. Can't wait to see you on an episode of Bosch Legacy. Hell yeah. Which is there you go. a great show about Los Angeles. You know, he says, I meet at DeLong Pre Park. I'm like, oh, I know where that is. You know, or there are Trejo's Donuts or Trejo's Tacos or something along those lines. Oh, I love it. Le- Tre- or Trejo's Transmissions. Trejo's tra- Does he have a transmission? <laughs> I don't know, but he might. He should. <laughs> the guy is <laughs> very inventive should. and, uh, you know, very well loved by the community. Yeah. Thanks, that Jeff. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, if you need help with your home voiceover studio, you can come work with me by going over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and check out all my services or... The guy that's got more services on his website than... I know. It's a bit of a Greek restaurant menu. We all know what that is. <laughs> like the menu at... at, uh, at um, what's, what's the one we used to go to down the street with an H? Yeah. Oh, um, H down the street. Starts with an H. Heroes? Hugo's. Hugo's. It's got a heck of a menu. Oh, great restaurant. But my website, it's got a lot going on. We understand that. <laughs> but if you go to georgethe.tech... And if you click the green button at the top left, that's a good place to start. If you just don't want to read through the site and navigate it, you can get help uh, with what help you need <laughs> right there. And that's a good way to start. But if you also like coupons and you like discounts, uh, georgethe.tech slash V-O-B-X is where I will have our coupon codes. And um, maybe we'll have some juicier ones for the, you know, it's that time of year. So we'll kick it up a notch. So it's stay the tuned most over there. Wonderful time. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Did they just defrost what's her face again? Yes, they did. Actually they defrost her on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> they start really early now. Um anyway. Oh, and we're also we have three booths for sale that we're brokering. Three. Two massive studio bricks, about seven feet by six feet God, you and, the family in there. It's, and yeah. one uh, diamond vocal booth.com series booth uh, all here in LA they're on the website now uh, if you go to the services page because that's the only place I had to put them you'll see them on there uh, we need to get these sold for our clients uh, they are taking up some serious space as you can imagine and they need to get them out of there so if you're interested uh, reach out uh, to us actually Sue is helping with that oh good <laughs> Put her in charge of that, uh, to so you can email Sue and she can get you get your information and uh, get your bid in the ring. Throw your hat in the ring okay. to get one of those. Um, let's get to the don't. Oh, oh, one more thing. Oh, but wait, there's more. We want your contributions. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yes. I mean, if you've been watching this show for a while, uh, which a lot of you have for like twelve years, some of you, yeah. Uh, in the last year or so, if there's been a real golden nugget, something that you thought a guest of ours talked about or something that George and I uh, brought up on the show that you think would make a nice little short because we want to throw a bunch of those on, on our social media during the next month or so yeah. before we retool a little bit, mm-hmm. write to us and say, this was a good section, this was a good segment, and and we will curate that down and get that out yeah. because we want that information getting out to people. Put a link to the YouTube of the show or right. at the very least the episode number of the show and approximately what time we're talking about time yeah. stamp of when and what we were talking about. That we we'll try to assemble those, we'll get those out on social media and if you contribute one that we use, we'll include we'll your social tag in there if you want to be tagged. 
put that in there and we'll also include that and give you credit. So uh, Absolutely. So people would really appreciate that. But the other people we need to thank are the people who donate oh. to the show. Oh, by the way, how do you send those in? Because we didn't tell them that part. Oh. I, Email oh, to oh, the guys at V-O-B-S dot TV. That's Sue got that up there. Did she put that I'm up sure there? I'm sure she did. She's always on it, but... Uh, she did. Oh, there it, there it is. The guys at VOBS.TV. Thanks, Sue. She does a great job. All righty. Even in pain. Yeah. Let's thank our uh, our amazing donors who have stuck with us through thick and thin, mostly through thick. Mm -hmm. uh, these, great are, these are our executive producers? <laughs> Okay, yes. but we're not going to go that far. Donors. We'll uh, stick with donors. Uh, you start. <laughs> Greg Cooper. Grace Newton. Christopher Epperson. Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Tom Pinto. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Production. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Rob Ryder. Got that right. Shauna Pennington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. Maria Marcus. And Sandra, Sandra Manwiller. Man Thank you all for your donations, making the show technically perfect. It actually probably looks really good tonight. I it's, hope so. It's good to be in the studio. I yeah. Mean, it's more fun this way. It really and, it uh, is. It is. It, it's worth the almost hour drive in traffic. <laughs> yeah, come a little early. Come for lunch. It's a You're lot right. easier. I could, get, I could get here a little earlier, couldn't I? It, you really could. It's only <laughs> twice a month. It's easy enough. <laughs> anyway, uh, we also need to thank our, our amazing sponsors, sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Why do I have to actually read it? You'd think I would have it memorized by now. <laughs> uh, VoiceOver Extra, thanks to John Florian. Thanks, John. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com, thanks to David H. Lawrence the 17th. VoiceActor.com, thanks Joe to Joe Davis. Davis. And WorldVoices.org. That's World-Voices.org, where I am the president and CEO and chief bottle washer uh, we got some great <laughs> stuff over at uh, world-voices.org. Please join us and uh, be part of lots of cool stuff. Like we got a big conference coming up in Chicago next cool. year. That's right. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we need to thank Jeff Holman. Put up his IMDb one more time because he's been <laughs> you know he has been so loyal. Thank you, Jeff. We really, really appreciate, appreciate it. it. We really do appreciate it, man. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I had a lot of work in the in the chat room there, and no, it makes questions. the show so much smoother. We yeah. appreciate it. And imdb dot me, imdb dot me. This for all you listeners. <laughs> slash Jeff J E F F, not the other Jeff Holman, not with an E. There's no two L H O L M A N. Right, the simple Thank version you. of yeah. Holman. And and thanks a whole lot to Sue Merlino who's thanks, suffering, Sue. Yeah. And, you know, with She's, back pain yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. you know, and she but she gets it done. Not even here. We like having awesome her here because yeah. she's real pleasant to have around. But it's yeah. also great that she gets this done. Uh, Sue, take care of yourself and yeah, thank uh, you. looking forward to working with you in 2024. Yes, feel better, Sue. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So anyway, that's going to do it for us tonight. Mr. Mr. Widom, you know, always what? a pleasure. Yeah, it has been a pleasure. But you know who's missing, and we didn't get to thank who? Lee Penny. And of course, <laughs> Lee Penny just for being Lee Penny. <laughs> Where are you, Lee? Yeah, come visit us. France, you? Arizona, I don't know, somewhere in a kitchen. I'm sure gets around that guy. That's right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> look, we're here to help you with your home voiceover studio and advice on how to run a voiceover business because it's an entrepreneurial business kids it and is. showbiz yeah and a little bit of showbiz a little but bit of it is a business and we want you to learn how to do it right mostly we want you to sound good and there's a lot of ways to do it but we've come to the conclusion that if it sounds good it is good i'm dan leonard and i'm george Whittem, and this is voiceover body shop or vo B S Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Talk Tech Have a great holiday season everybody we'll see you next time